Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, you will notice, of course, we are at uh, and are thrilled to be in a different location this evening uh, on Thomas College's campus, uh, beautiful campus this afternoon. Uh, we are typically at 10 Water Street in downtown Waterville, Maine, at Bricks Co-working and Innovation Space. So thank you for those that made the jump with us. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Central Maine Tech Night uh, and have not attended in the past, Central Maine Tech Night is a monthly evening event with our small group setting. Founders and leaders share real advice on how they overcame challenges, capitalized on their target market, and developed their product, providing you with actionable insight for your own products and processes. You may find us on Facebook or online at centralmaine.org at the Tech Night tab. I'd like to thank our sponsors this evening, Central Maine and Central Maine Growth Council for providing this free event. Uh, this event is sponsored by CGI, Thomas College's Harold Alphon Institute for Business Innovation, Valley Beverage, and Bricks Coworking and Innovation Space. In addition, I'd like to say thank you to the folks that are watching at home. Uh, thank you to Chad and his team, uh, and this will be viewable on Crossroads TV on channel 1301. Uh, March's Tech Talk, we have a real special one lined up for you and I think really critically important uh, in terms of a use of what is really one of the most valuable fisheries in the world uh, and an iconic and flagship product for the state of Maine. Uh, tonight's Tech Talk is Skin Care and Lobster, how a skin soothing protein and lobster was discovered and how new, how new Maine skin care brand Marion has, is bringing it into the world by Patrick Reading, co-founder Demaris. Uh, lobster is best known as a main delicacy, but as a co-founder at Demarius, Humane grad and biotech entrepreneur Patrick is working to identify and validate uses for lobster within the skincare industry and biomedical industries. This product creates active skincare ingredients from sustainable marine sources and their brand, incorporates them into products for people with dry, aging skin and or angry skin. In his tech talk, Patrick will give his audience a behind the scenes look at how research and serendipity can become a consumer product on the shelf. From discovery to customer validation and branding, he'll share what it means to become a unique business within, with healing properties of lobster and the serendipity of finding them. And through this process behind commercialization to value added products and talk about their flagship uh, soothing hydration cream this will be that will be available this summer so with that uh, join me in welcoming our co-founder Patrick Breeding sorry that was a mouthful hi everyone um, my name is Patrick I'm the co-founder of Dermaris and as uh, Garvin explained we're, we're a company we're really a biotech company that's interested and identifying, validating, and positioning active ingredients, um, specifically for skincare and pharmaceuticals, derived from sustainable marine sources. So what we've found is that a protein derived from lobster has a range of um, different pharmaceutical and cosmetic applications. And in our flagship product, we're, we're bringing into the lives of people um, with aggravated and dry and angry skin a product that can help calm their flare-ups and, and find that relief that they were looking for um, that we found um, through a little bit of serendipity. Um, so I think that this is maybe less of a traditional tech talk and more of a cool storytelling session about um, how, how what we're doing came into the world, how we found it, the thought processes we went through to get to where we are. Um, so that's what I was, I was hoping to do today and, and then hopefully engage in some, um, you know, we have a warm, small audience so we can engage in some uh, conversation if possible, that would be great. Um, so the beginning of Dermaris and what we're doing really goes back to um, when I started grad school in biomedical engineering at UMaine. Um, I was uh, looking for a project. I had built a very cool microscope that could do a lot of things, look at single cells and how they move around in space, and I wanted to figure out what could we use this microscope to look for and look at, what cool things could we do. And I, um, with my advisor, went around and connected with people uh, across Maine and the most compelling pool conversation we had was with Dr. Bob Bayer, who at the time was the director of the Lobster Institute. And Bob um, 
was interested in figuring out how we could take things going down the drain from spending decades in the lobster industry, um, you know, in, in finding value-added ways to position those, and if possible, ways to position those waste byproducts in ways that create a in higher value revenue stream um, per unit than lobster meat itself. And what Bob was interested in initially was a couple side projects, and um, it's just kind of a funny side note. We started off by um, doing some three-dimensional um, rendering of lobster genitalia, and we quickly um, banged that project out and got through that one. Um, and we moved on to more, more interesting projects as I was, I was able to communicate to Bob my motivation, which comes from my own family's experiences with my dad um, having multiple battles with cancer, and I was really interested in, in, in finding something that could actually help people's quality of life. And um, it just so happened that Bob, had, during, during his time um, towards the end of his career as a faculty member, had formed a company um, to validate and position this new protein that he had found. Um, he, he had read the literature, um, he had known there was potential out there, and he was your um, not very typical scientist that went ahead and just tried things and just did it just to see if they would work. Um, so Bob had found all of these different applications um, ranging from veterinary applications and stabilizing red blood cell count in, in, in dogs and all over to even helping family and friends um, when he would give this raw material to people um, calm their shingles outbreaks, calm their, their cold sores. And um, I became really interested in, in that what he was doing. And we started off on the anti-cancer route. Um, so we were doing some things in the lab. We, we generated some data on the in vitro just in, in the lab. Um, and then I started to see Bob on the side was doing all of these amazing things. And no one was giving attention to it. No one was really pushing it and helping it get to a point where it needed to be. Um, turned into a product and brought into the world. And um, I started to get really interested in kind of the alternative ways that, that we can um, find tools to help solve people's problems. It's not always the traditional step-by-step um, -step solve, a, solve a problem in this, this programmed way. It's a, often a lot of serendipity. And so what happened for us is I had seen Bob, um, when I was doing this, this traditional drug discovery lab stuff, do all of these things on the side revolving around skin care and using it just as its own ingredient. Um, and at the time, um, my partner Amber, who is also um, in co-founder, uh, she was also in grad school with me, had incredibly severe eczema and had for years, and it looked a little bit like, like this. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but her skin was incredibly damaged. It was constantly going through a battle with itself very, very dry, um, red patches all concentrated over her face. And um, she, she basically lived this life of wearing hats and hoodies and scarves and covering it up every single day. And, and I watched it every single day and it was horrible to see someone go through that. So as I was doing the lab stuff and seeing Bob do all these kind of extracurricular skincare activities, um, we decided to try to step away from the traditional route of trying to calm Amber's flare up and, and literally try to scratch the, our, our own itch. So we went home and started to develop um, skincare products. We took this active material um, and incorporated it into just a gener generic cosmetic base. Um, and then Amber began to apply it to her eczema um, really as a last resort. Because when you're at that type of place with, with your skin, um, you're willing to try anything and you're, you're willing to get very creative about what solution you incorporate. Um, so to our, our surprise, um, Amber started to apply it two times a day and throughout the day as needed, just spot treating it. And after a week, um, this happened. And it was an incredible turnaround for Amber. Um, and as, as you can see, you know, her eczema was completely calmed. And for the first time, Amber was able to go out into the world and you know, not have to cover it up, not have to hide her skin. And just she could actually go into the world and just live a normal life without being constantly distracted by her own skin. Um, and this was incredible for us. This was everything. This kind of very, very drastically changed our outlook on the way that things are brought into the world and discovered. Um, you know, it was true serendipity. And that was the, really the motivating force behind forming Dermaris. Um, so when that happened, we became 
a little bit less interested in academics and more interested in figuring out, okay, we have this thing, it's obviously doing something, and we started to make more of the homemade products and give it to family and friends, and we saw the same consistent efficacy. So it's, something's going on. How do we prove that it works? How do we know the mechanism by which it works, and how do we bring it into the world? And through what channels and vehicles can we bring that into the world? And that began to form the vision for Dermaris. So we began to first think, well, Dermaris is really just a consumer-facing skincare brand um, with a cool active ingredient, um, but the strengths really to bring a product into the world would be brand and marketing and cutting through the noise and getting in front of people's faces and catching their attention. Um, but what, as we started to get down the process of, of building this company, we realized that we're building a company with two core facets or two core competencies. One is certainly the brand and the marketing, and um, that is the vehicle by which we can bring products directly into people's lives and have an intimate relationship with the people that will serve. The other facet is really an R&D pipeline that we can build on the back end that's dedicated to finding what's going down the drain or what is wasted currently. Um, you know, what, what physically is it? What are the characteristics of it? Based on that information, what types of things can it do? And based on that information, what are we going to explore and how are we going to build the resources and the, the team, which is bringing together multiple companies that have core competencies in the different parts of the value chain um, from from you know lobstering, Luke's lobster, over to protein purification, um, then to positioning skincare products. How can we bring all these companies together and use that as the channel um, to position new active ingredients, not just the protein we found? We'd like to envision a world where we, we're going through both. We're, we're doing the science, we're patenting the active ingredient, we're going through clinical studies, and we're positioning it through our brand. But there might be more instances where we find a new active ingredient and something new coming from lobsters that has more inherent product market fit um, than our protein does. And through that, perhaps we could go approach Estee Lauder, L'Oreal, or, or J&J. &J. And I hope that they're watching this live stream. That would be really convenient. <laughs> so now, right, right now, we're, we're focusing on building both sides. And we've formed strategic partnerships with all those types of companies that I mentioned on the R&D side. Um, that you know, we we can source this, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds of this raw ingredient um, at very very little cost. We can send it over to this protein purification manufacturing partner that we have, and they can purify it, standardize it, and send it over to the lab that we know um, can not only build this into a skincare product and test it on consumers, but characterize the mechanism by which it works, which are, which is the difference between a cosmetic and a skincare. You know, you put something in there, you give it to someone, they try it, and you measure for an outcome. That's cosmetic and skincare. For drug discovery, you need to know the mechanism by which it happens. So we set up the, the, you know, the core competency in our partnerships to do both of those things. On the consumer-facing brand side, we spent a lot of time um, thinking about elegantly branding and coming up with a very beautiful name and logo, and we ended up realizing we just had to put our egos to the side and just go with what people seem to like and not have to get to 100% perfection on the name, 85% is okay. Um, we ended up arriving at a name and a brand identity that we really, really love, though. Um, and this is, this is Marin. Um, we, Marin's actually uh, stands for the, um, or it means the star of the sea, and, and we'll see if we end up incorporating that into the, the meaning of the brand. But really what we want to do with Marin is deliver to people uh, relief, comfort, and safety. And that comes through through trust. You know, you can Google every single one of our ingredients and know that there's no study that shows that it's irritating to your skin. You know, we, we built our products through empathy, through knowing what it's like to have um, these horrible diseases and problematic skin. Um, so it's really about trust. Um, then, comes, then comes the relief. And we hope that with an initial line of products and our flagship product that I'll talk about, this can be something that people can reach to when they're having some type of flare-up, and they can trust that this is something that will help them and calm them, that's not going to irritate them. Um, then comes the comfort, um, because Amber now has lived her life after experiencing what our product did for her um, with, without eczema or with very little eczema. So after you help someone and relieve their problem, 
there's the rest of the, their life that they have their skin. And so we hope to build a relationship with people where we help them overcome their problems and their aggravated skin and then are with them for the rest of their skin lifetime. So we really hope to develop high quality skin products that really feel good. They go in well. Um, you know, they leave a good after feel and it's not just about solving the problem. It's about catering to the entire experience afterwards. And that's interestingly how we developed our flagship product, which is our Marin Soothing Hydration Cream. Um, it was a really interesting way that this came about. Um, coming from an engineering background, we designed our, our, the entire formulation of our product and, and, and the package itself and the branding from complete user experience. There was, there was very little quantitative about what we did and very much qualitative. So we began to work with our manufacturer um, and instead of saying we want this ingredient and at this amount and this, we said we want it to feel very moisturizing. We want it to lock in moisture. We want it to leave um, a, a layer that would protect the barrier of your skin. We want it to soak in in a, in a very rich and deep way. We want it to be very thick and creamy when it goes on and feel indulgent. And at first, our, our manufacturer wasn't, um, they said this is not the way to characterize skincare products. It's, it's this way, it's called this, this name. And, and we said, hey, can, you know, can you, uh, can you cater to us on this one? We're novices. We're really looking to just get the feeling out of this because we don't want to release a product until it feels right, it goes in right. We know, we know we can believe in the experience of what we're delivering. And we went back and forth for so many formulations and we finally arrived at a product that not only Amber would use for her eczema that goes on and doesn't sting, doesn't burn, doesn't irritate, um, but it goes on and it soaks in and it leaves a layer that, that protects your skin with a little bit of shea butter and coconut oil. Um, and it has squalene, uh, squalane and hyaluronic acid that helps lock in moisture. In addition to our incredible um, you know, superhero ingredient derived from the lobster that we think makes an incredible product, not just for its soothing capacities, um, but how it feels going on. It's a, it's a great product and we're finally at a place where we're able to begin to um, get the manufacturing timelines in place and start all of our testing. And so for us, our, our customers really, really concerned about um, the safety of it, like almost less the efficacy. It's a, it's a delicate balance, but um, when you've tried a lot of things and your skin's particularly sensitive, you're, you're worried about you know, how it will go on and feel. Um, so we're currently right now about a week and a half into a clinical safety study um, where we have 50 participants testing this product for a period of six weeks. Um, and you generally look to 48 hours to see if it's gonna irritate your skin. And we're, we're all set, we're great. Um, which, is, which is incredibly encouraging because we now have collected so many testimonials behind our, our product that's, that's very encouraging. And I just thought I'd, I'd share a couple. Um, Jordan, who had suffered from eczema for years and tried everything that you know, she possibly could, but her skin would typically become inflamed and itchy when she'd use it. And this was something that simply didn't do that. And then it happened to actually clear her eczema patch up. Um, to have people asking for the product like that um, is, is incredible. And the same with Wendy, who's, you know, sometimes the customer is not actually the person that's buying and it's, it's her daughter who just wanted to get to a wedding and not have to worry about her skin and we were able to deliver that. And, um, and Lisa, who had tried all of the over-the-counter products and prescription products exactly to how Amber had tried um, and nothing had worked for her um, until she tried our, our product. So these are just some of the testimonials that really allow us to, um, it makes it very easy to get out of bed in the morning a little earlier and go to bed a little later so that we can push towards something very meaningful and fulfilling for us. Um, so over the past couple months, we've, we really started in August um, and we've had a lot of success and, and made a lot of uh, movements. We, we were able to participate in a couple programs, Scratchpad being the the, the most important one to us, an accelerator program out of Bangor, um, run by Jason Harkins and Lisa um, Liberatory. That was, uh, that was a great program we participated in that really accelerated every facet of our business development and our product and our go-to-market, um, especially thinking around the um, getting your mind out of the scarcity mindset and into the abundance and um, learning that you know, raising money early is not a bad thing so that we can get everything we need together so that we can launch a product that we can feel extra good about and, and really push into the market. Um, 
put Beauty Accelerate up there, which was a very cool event we attended. Um, it was interesting because we were able to meet some of the key decision makers at large companies in J&J, Estee Lauder, and begin to understand what they look for in an active ingredient like ours and in a brand like ours. Um, and that formed our, our vision for building both the science and the marketing side, because that's what they're really looking for when they're vetting a company. Um, we, again, we've started our manufacturing timelines, which is great, and we're now starting to work on um, working with our, our strategic partners on getting that lab testing done so that while we're launching you know, a really skincare, a, a cosmetic product, we can be building a clinically backed active ingredient and start to marry those as, as we go forward. Um, we also wanted to throw out there that currently to fund the rest of our launch, we're, we're raising a small 30K convertible note to, to fund the rest of the manufacturing timelines and it give us our, a little bit of a marketing spend as we get out there. Our, our channel is complete direct to consumer e-commerce, so the coronavirus is very inconvenient. We hope that we'll continue to be able to ship things via Amazon and UPX and FedEx, um, but uh, a marketing spend is very important for us, and that's why we're also looking for um, much more actively now a fractional CMO. Um, we'll be the first, again, to put our egos aside and realize that marketing is a core competency of this company and realize that is not a core competency that, that two passionate engineers bring. Um, so if any of you know investors that are interested in what we're doing or a marketing, um, you know, skilled marketing person that has lived experience in personal care products, we would really like to talk to them. So that's really the overview of what we're doing. I wanted to finish on this slide and express how excited we are to um, have gone through many, many months of R&D and cha changing the formulation, enhancing the experience, optimizing the brand, and being finally ready to launch our soothing hydration cream product. Um, it's been a very, very cool adventure so far, and we're, we're excited for what things look like moving forward on both building the brand and getting in front of people and letting people know that we exist and we're out there, and this is another tool in your skincare toolkit. Um, and we're also very excited to find out kind of the, the really cool scientific ex exploratory adventure of figuring out what else is going down the drain, what else is wasted, and why is it not being utilized, and how can we take it and plug it into an existing business model or a company that, that is operating in a space relevant to whatever that compound or molecule might do, and then begin to position those so that we can d take everything that's wasted in Maine and, and ideally, you know, in the U.S. And, and find a use for it. There's really, you know, there's, depending on how, um, how psychological we, we could possibly get into the, this phrase, but um, really everything has a, a purpose and a use. Um, there's, there's really, you know, everything is a thing that had, works in a certain way and there's a reason that it's in the world. So, you know, why are things just sitting in landfills? Why are things just going in, in the trash can into the ocean? Everything has a potential application. If, and if you can, I think it's interesting to comment on the value added blue economy because that's something that's starting to really spur up in Maine. If you can find out what it is that thing is and characterize it and understand the unique um, character traits of, about it, um, to use a non-scientific term, and then figure out what about those traits allows it to do certain jobs and then find the channels by which those jobs can be done. And that's really how you create this value-added blue economy, which we're excited to be a part of, and we're excited to be a part of you know, the lives of the people we're, we'll serve that hopefully know that we exist as a brand and, and try our new tool out to, to help with their skin problems. So that's all I have. Thank you, thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to talking with you guys. Luke's Lobster, as well as the, the element of value add to Maine's commercial fishery. Can you touch a little bit on uh, the, the sourcing of that, as well as a little bit of that journey from boat to lab to a uh, skincare product? Uh, what does that look like? The journey from boat to lab to skincare product. So, really, we worked directly. Um, we we worked directly with Luke and Cape Seafood, and um, they've developed over a long period of time with one of our other part, uh, protein purification partners, the ability to um, train people on how to go in and collect the protein from lobsters in a, you know, a non-lethal non way. Um, and it's almost like another gear that they just put into their existing business. Um, you know, as lobsters are getting processed on a conveyor belt or even later on, you know, when we're able to do this, you know, 
um, in any type of different way. It's just it's just another job to be done within their capacity. You know, they're 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 a producer of goods, and this is just almost like another sort of good that they're producing within their operation. So. Um, I had very little to do with that, a lot of work that they had done, um, which has been uh, fantastic work, and they got it down to a very simple science. So now we're able to say, fantastic, so this is now kind of a part of this value chain that we're hoping to create that value on the end so that all of it becomes valuable. Um, and, and they have a good rigid SOP in place. They know what they're doing. They can provide consistent material up to a point where they're, they can produce enough material for us to capture 100% of the eczema market and sell them four products a year. So there's so much going down the drain that um, it's just one of the questions we get off and that it's almost, it's just not a problem at all to source it. Um, it's a race to who can find the different applications, who can command the IP around that application and how quickly can you bring it into the world and navigate all the regulatory barriers to do so. so. I don't, I don't think that answered your question either, but it's an interesting rant. Yeah, sorry. This, this might sound like a dumb question, but if you're allergic, is there an allergy component to it? I assume if you're allergic to seafood, you can't use this product. I assume that's it. Yeah, so that's something that we have. Um, I know the label's a little blurry, but it's right up on the front on the label there. And um, we know, you know, because we understand what the molecule is, which is part of the reason I like said it a couple times, we know what triggers the. Um, the shellfish allergens, it's a, it's a part of it called tropomyosin, and we'd like to work towards a point where we can remove that from the molecule itself and make this available to everyone. Um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that people with shellfish allergen won't be able to use this product initially, but um, it's one of those costs of getting something out there and unfortunate, yeah, parts of it. Yeah, it's a good question. You mentioned the blue economy and in this case, adapting it to skincare products. Um, can you touch on what's kind of trendy within the industry, uh, where the industry as a whole is going? I think we see a lot of green washing or sustainability this, sustainability that. Here you truly do have uh, a very sustainable product uh, with, in the case of Luke's, another uh, revenue vertical for them, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and you seem to be nicely positioned uh, for that future within this industry, is that the case? And you know, what do you see in the skincare um, products industry? There, there's a couple trends that we definitely click, click with, and a couple trends that we will be a tool in the toolkit of. So um, we really quick click with, excuse me, um, the natural, um, the natural and naturally active trend. Um, I think that that spans across all food and beverage and um, personal care product categories. Um, the idea that this actually comes from nature and is not synthetically generated in a lab is, is very attractive, um, regardless of whether or not that's an actual physical value proposition. It's, a, it's an emotional value proposition. Um, and, and it is physically important. But um, I think the, the natural abundance of the protein combined with the marine sourcing of it, um, it, it plays to a cool story around it. And it's, and it's also very important. Um, there are a lot of trends, um, you know, trying to take away the synthetic chemicals, trying to take away the harmful irritants, um, and a lot towards personalization. So I think that, you know, 20, 30, 40 years down the line, um, ideally some type of algorithm would be able to assess the state of your skin in specific places of your skin and be able to um, span a, a range of tools and we hope to generate a lot of those uh, in terms of active ingredient in products that click best with you. And, and I think personalization is um, the, 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 the biggest way we're, we're going towards and the most direct that we can point to and say this is the future of this industry, but I also think that beauty from within and that, that's in cosmetics, skincare, and pharmaceuticals uh, is very important. So, um, you know, making alterations to your gut microbiome to try to, to try to heal your inflammation is, you know, arguably better if not, if, you know, same if not better than, than using a skincare product or fasting or cutting out sugar and carbs, all, all of these things that beauty, that are producing health and beauty from within. I think that we kind of, we'll find if we're able to click with the beauty and health from within. Um, we're really interested to see if our material, we, we have a range of um, things we could point to, other pro proteins out there, other peptides out there, and say, 
well, this thing, you know, we know that the skin is comprised of glycoproteins, and when you deliver glycoproteins to the skin, you essentially repair the barrier. So because of that, you can do that externally. Well, if you have an anti-inflammatory and you ingest it internally, well, how does, how does that work? And they're all things that I think we want to discover later on and flesh out um, every opportunity. I think it's, it's going to be incredibly important for us and other people like us um, to not discredit a certain type of mechanism or way of action or opportunity just because it hasn't been validated by science because we just had a lobsterman slap some um, lobster protein on, on you know, his dog and his friends and family and um, we're, we're about to grow a really powerful company out of that and it was all serendipity. Um, so that's what I have to say, another rant to your question. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, real quickly, Patrick, could you just give an overview of what the FDA process would be or something when you, have, when you will, are allowed to put a topical agent on? Where do you have to go and how did you do that to get where you're at? That's a really good question. And that was, um, we, we had a, a lot of help in answering that question when we went to um, the eczema and, and beauty conferences that we did and we were able to talk to some of the, some of the key people that have thought through this before. Um, I was bred in a, um, you know, a program that, that only looked to the FDA um, clinical study um, you know, and drug approval process and said, this is the phase one, two, three process by which we do this. Um, and in beauty and cosmetics and, and then skincare, which is kind of in between the two, um, is, is very different. So um, if we were to do an over-the-counter drug and we um, did all of the studies to show um, you know, this is what we have, this is how it works, and this is how, um, you know, here's, here's a monograph, which is, which is basically a, here's how to, how to use it in the product and the efficacy to expect out of it. Um, that would kind of be an over-the-counter drug. And then by doing that, we would publish all of this information as to how to use our differentiator, what it looks like, how to get all of these things, um, and then we would surrender it to all of our competitors. Um, so. I remember talking to one of the founders of Sarah B, and, and he said, well, why would I do that? Why don't I just go and ask the key decision makers and the, the, the ethical leaders in the channel by which I want to get to our consumers and see what I need to do to prove to them? <clears throat> so for Sarah V's example, it was derms. So even dermatologists, they, they don't need a drug to best serve their, their customers. They need the best thing that will work in a statistically significant, you know, backed, um, the, the, in the right study. So they did all the studies, but you know, you didn't need to make a drug to, to show them, look, we did everything right and ethically, and we know the science, um, and we're gonna retain our, our you know, ability to make this, and then they commanded the patent. So we kind of, and then and they, they became the number one um, dermatologist recommended moisturizer in the United States. And so we borrowed from that. Um, I remember talking to him at a conference, and uh, we said, well, okay, so, so what do we have here? We have over 50 testimonials showing that um, people had you know, Im decreased redness, decreased dryness, increased feeling of moisture. Um, they, they felt soothed after they used it every time. So we were able to, through sending samples out to people, to family and friends, generate our own statistically significant um, evidence to support that um, it, would, it would do something in a, in a certain set of things for people. And for us, we're bringing this into the world um, really for the early adopters that are, that are looking for that creative way to solve their problem. So we're not saying this is going to treat your eczema. We're saying, look, we, we've seen all of this evidence and, and, and this is what it's shown us. Um, we're not gonna make a, a claim to treat or cure any type of disease, um, you know, but this is what we've seen so far. And that's why we named it a soothing hydration cream because we've seen two things. It calms people's flare-ups and soothes them, and it helps their skin um, re retain hydration and kind of maintain a healthy skin state over time. So it was it was really interesting to adopt a new frame. Um, I used I would I, it's not it's not a different set of ethics, but it's also it's a different mindset, you know. And coming from a place where we lived through the experience of knowing. You know, going on Reddit, finding all the sub the subreddits just for this one specific thing to try to find if it worked. You know, we, we lived through that, and we know what people like us um, are are going through and, and are are looking to know about the product beforehand. Um, so we've seen that we've kind of seen the endpoint, 
we're still doing the science to learn the mechanism and we're so excited to see how that works out but we made sure to go above and beyond what we needed to do and that's why we did the safety testing that's why we're testing to show that no no microbes are growing in the formulation or anything like that so if anything we can tell you that this is something that's safe and try it it feels really good Yeah, so we want to get to a point on the science side where we've very rigidly standardized um, the preparation of the material, um, how we add it to a range of different products, not just a skin cream. Um, we'd like to introduce a line, if not several lines, um, probably in the next three years that, that use that more standardized material. Um, and that way we're able to more scalably produce it. On the brand side, We'd like to do e-commerce so that we can just get in front of those early adopters and start spreading word of mouth. And that's what's going to drive the highest conversion for us. Um, looking two to three years ahead on the brand side, we're already working now with our, our partners over in New York that test skincare products all the time to understand how can we do um, a set of inflammation in eczema-specific studies um, in a statistically significant way so that we can qualify to get into channels like QVC, Sephora, Ulta. Um, and that would really unlock um, incredible, incredible growth for us. In our industry, um, we're, you know, uh, ex exit is an acquisition in your company is valued at four to, four to six X revenue. Um, so in five years, we, we really hope to be getting to a place where um, we're valued around 50 million if we can get both the brand side, build, building that aggressively and bringing on a strong marketing team, as well as getting that clinically backed ingredient. And that's the difference between taking um, Burt's Bees formula and slapping on a new label and calling it yours and going with just the brand. Um, you know, we have something that will be rooted in science. We can command a, a patent family around it. Um, and we hope that looks very ripe to people that are watching us grow. Are you currently in the patent process? Yeah, we have, we have several um, provisionals submitted and many non-provisionals will be submitted within the coming months here before we launch. Um, the, the parent uh, company that we spun out of has two issued patents revolving around the anti-cancer and antiviral applications of it as well. So there, there's a lot of things just even going down the drain in terms of potential for this one protein. We're really interested in exploring the inflammation, the anti-aging, the skin elasticity, um, and the anti-wrinkle properties as well as a, a slew of other cosmetic properties as well. Yeah. Well, if there aren't any other questions, uh, help me in thanking Patrick. Really thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming this evening. Thank you for folks watching at home. And uh, thank you so much to Thomas College for playing host to us here on this beautiful campus. Um, this uh, slide deck will be available on our website, and you'll be able to enjoy that on uh, channel 1301 as well. I'd like to say, uh, to all that uh, please join us next month, uh, the second Thursday, our tech talk will be Revision Energy. Uh, that will be principally focused on uh, EV, electrical vehicle charging stations, uh, and the underlying technology and what the future holds uh, for EV charging. So uh, thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next month.